Hey, my name is Mark Bennett. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of a new platform as a service built on top of Kubernetes called Rio from Rancher Labs. I'm a big fan of it because it's simple uh, and it just gets out of your way, which I like a lot. So to show this off, I'm going to be doing a quick demo where I go and deploy a service using Rio on a new Kubernetes cluster. To be clear, uh, I have done a few things. I tried to get the whole demo down under 10 minutes, which means that I've pre-configured a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I spun up a new one about an hour ago on DigitalOcean, and I have already installed the uh, Rio components that I'm gonna be using. But I will quickly pretend like I haven't done that and show you what I've done. You'll be able to find all of my code and things that I'm using in uh, a guest available here. Uh, you can find it if you go to um, find me on GitHub right there. All right, so to walk you through, I've already gone and done these in advance. Um, to install it, you basically go and download the command line tool. So you can get this directly from the GitHub releases page, or you can use this script, which will download and install it for you. That's usually what I do. And then um, you need to install into Kubernetes the Rio components that are needed so that Rio can run. Uh, I timed this about six minutes, so I'm dropping it from my demo, but this is the actual command that I ran to do it. Rio install HTTP port 80, um, HTTPS port 443. You don't actually need the HTTP uh, and HTTPS options if you're not going to be using uh, HTTPS, but if you want it to work with Let's Encrypt, you're going to want to make sure that you're running on standard ports. So this is where things get cool. Um, when you want to run a project, you can either run it from a Docker image or you can go and run it directly from um, a GitHub repository. So I'm going to get this started and then I'll explain what's happening here. All right, so this is gonna create um, a new service in Rio called Simple Server from the GitHub repository that I have set up for this demo. So it's spinning things up right now and you can monitor its status using Rio PS. So here um, you can see that it, the service was created seven seconds ago um, it already has an endpoint set up, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, it's currently the first revision. None of the pods running this have spun up yet. And when they do spin up, 100% of the traffic to this service will go to this revision. Uh, right now it's waiting because it's actually going, uh, cloning the repository, looking for the Docker file in it, and then running Docker build on that Docker file. Uh, I've done this once already on the cluster, so most of the layers should be cached, so it should be pretty fast. But depending, uh, you know, it can take a few minutes uh, to longer to build your Docker image. So you want to optimize those. Let's see how we're going here. Yeah, so the build is still going. So while it's doing that, I'm going to jump over here to my browser and explain a little bit more about Rio and how it works. So over here, um, what you're seeing is uh, a couple things. So Rio, you can find either through their website at rio.io, which is right here, or um, more often than not, you'd be going to their GitHub repository, um, which is under the Rancher organization, um, and it's just called Rio. It's mostly written in Go, as you can see here, and uh, it's fairly active. They seem to merge in pull requests every day or so. Uh, what you will see is that there's a quick summary of it in the README. Um, it is alpha software, as they know, so I wouldn't use this in production yet, but it does do quite a few things. It's gonna provide you out of the box with um, a lot of tools that you need for continuous delivery. So it'll do things like handle uh, DNS and routing for you in Kubernetes automatically. It does auto scaling, so you can actually set it to scale down to zero, or um, you can set it to go and scale up as high as you need based off the traffic coming to your site. 
uh, if you're on a more resource constrained cluster, you can also go and forego the automated scaling and just set a scale and then you don't need to run some of the monitoring tools. Uh, I can do stuff uh, where, as in this case, it monitors a Git repo, uh, and I think it pulls every 15 seconds and will update as master is updated. You can change the branch it watches. And I think the latest release actually will go and also use the GitHub webhook APIs to go and register with pull requests as well. So it'll actually spin up a new URL for each one of your pull requests if you set it up to do that. I'm not gonna do that in the demo today, but uh, I would definitely encourage you to try that and let me know how it goes. So uh, other things that it does really well is it automatically handles the HTTPS. So you can set up uh, a service and out of the box, everything is HTTPS by default. Um, but if we switch back over here to our terminal, you're gonna see that um, the endpoint, oh, it's now up. Take a look at that in a second. Uh, the endpoint is HTTPS, but it's at onrio.io, which isn't always ideal. So let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. So if I copy that URL, oops, copy, jump on over here to my browser. We should have a nice little message for everyone here. So, hello Edmonton. You can see I'm reloading that. It's coming live from my server. Um, so let's quickly demonstrate how we might change that. So I'm gonna pull up that repo that we just saw and we are gonna make a change and we're gonna go see if it picks it up live. So let's change this from hello Edmonton to hello DevOps meetup. Getting that change directly to master. From there, if we hop on over to our terminal again, you'll see here that the same service is still running, but there's something called a revision now. So revision, um, we can look at the revisions for this service. And if we're looking, yeah, there we go. So here it's gone and we have our initial version that it's spun up and it's serving. Um, but it's also gone and detected that I made a new commit to master and it is going to go and build an image. And then the cool thing is that it can actually do a staged deployment where it staggers the traffic from the previous revision to the new one. And so you'll see right now the weight is zero on the current revision, obviously because it's not available yet and it hasn't been built. And it's 100% on the old one. Once it's done building the image and has a pod running, the new image, it's going to go and automatically start shifting the weight between the old and the new revision until the old revision is entirely out of the cluster, at which point it will go and all traffic will be going to the current revision. Uh, so let's see if we can see that happening here. Uh, okay, so it's still building. Uh, it'll take a minute there. We'll just let that go and I will go back to you talking about some of the other things. Um, so. The cool thing is that a lot of Rio is actually hosted on Rio, including a bunch of analytics and stuff like that. So I've done Rio PS-A, which also lists the system um, services and things like that. So in here, it's running uh, Linkerd is how I say that, I don't know if that's correct, but it lets you connect. And if we jump over to a browser, we'll be able to see details of what is happening inside our cluster. So these are the different namespaces that are available. You can see um, the existing simple server deployment uh, as well as the new one that's spinning up. You can come in and it set all of this up automatically out of the box, which I really appreciate. Um, to be honest, I'm still learning how to use service meshes uh, and things like that, but setting this up yourself, you know, I could probably waste a whole day on doing these kind of things. So here you can see where all the traffic's coming in, the number of connections, how much is happening, who is connecting to it, um, what kind of requests they're making. You can go in and uh, tap, I think it's called. So then you pick like our default namespace, pick our pod that we want to take a look at, for example. And then you can actually go and I believe I can reload this and we'll see what's happening. So, okay, 
I'm not doing that right. But um, if you know how to use these, <laughs> there are a lot of uh, resources out of the box which can be handy. Um, you can do other stuff too, like you can see uh, the top routes, all sorts of things like that. Uh, I'm just going to jump back over here for one second and check on our revisions, see how they're doing. Yeah, oh, okay. So let's jump back over here really quickly and hopefully I'll catch the end of this. So it's finished that new revision and you can see the weight is shifting between the old and the new as we talk here. So in a moment, all of the traffic will have gone from the old revision to the new one. And if we look here, when I do Rio BS, you can see that it's actually deployed the new revision automatically based off me doing a, a GitHub commit. Uh, and I've literally set this all up as you've been watching here. So the other cool thing too is that uh, I've already set up a domain that we can use for the purposes of this demo. I'm just going to jump over here and make sure I've got the right command. But having already set it with the right IP for my Kubernetes load balancer, my DigitalOcean one, I should be able to just register a simple service um, that's created a new route, it's called. see it's created a new domain that goes through a simple service and if I've done this properly I should be able to jump back to my web browser and you will be able to see what I've just done there so rio demo.markbennett.ca and so cool thing here is um, if you look, the connection is already secured. Uh, it's secured by a valid Let's Encrypt certificate. Um, oh, maybe you can't see that right now. Okay, so I've jumped over. I'm now at riodemo.markbennett.ca and the connection is, oh, let's see if I can do this. Okay, let's do this properly. So we're at riodemo.markbennett.ca. If I reload, you can see hello DevOps meetup. And the cool thing is it's actually created a certificate for my domain um, using Let's Encrypt automatically. And that all happened in the background for me. I didn't have to set anything up, which is lovely. Um, and it'll keep it consistently running and everything else I need there. So yeah, that's my demo. If you have uh, any questions, I would definitely, there's lots of other things that Rio can do. Um, I would encourage you to go to their website here and shoot down all the way to the documentation here and in there you'll find lots of other things it goes through the concepts of what um, you know the, the new um, custom resource definitions it adds to kubernetes are things like the services the routes and things like that um, you can set up a real file that is sort of like uh, what you would use if you use docker compose which describes how the pieces of the service go together um, how it connects to other services running on Rio or in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, you can also use uh, Kubernetes standard uh, config and secrets to inject environmental variables or you know, share files and stuff like that into the pods that are run through Rio. Uh, that's a bit more advanced, but um, it will just, if you create a Rio file, Rio file and the secrets exist, it will just pull those from your Kubernetes cluster. Um, yeah, there's details here on how to set up the webhook and the pull request feature. And uh, I will probably post another video once I get that working as well. So if you have questions, um, the best places to go is hit them up on GitHub. Um, so that address again is uh, github.com slash rancher slash Rio. And um, the other things that you can do, they do respond quickly to issues, but they're also really available on Slack. Um, so go find them on Slack and uh, hop in there. The Rio channel is where you want to go, not the standard kind of welcome channel that you'll be bumped into. Uh, but once you're in Rio, you'll get lots of help there. And um, the only other thing I would say is I have had a couple of issues with upgrades to my cluster between versions. Uh, a few times I've basically just blown my cluster away to do the upgrade. So I wouldn't say this is production ready. Um, I have been using it for staging deployments to quickly deploy um, as I'm merging in a master on another one of my projects and it's working great. Uh, no complaints from the clients or anything, which is nice. And um, yeah, 
I, I think it's going to be an interesting project to watch and uh, one that will hopefully make using Kubernetes a lot more like using something like Heroku, but with a wonderful option that you can deploy locally to your own metal, to you know, digital ocean or Google, wherever you're deploying these days. So please let me know what you think, share your comments and thoughts in the video below. Thanks.